Derek, that's one of the scariest knockouts we've ever seen uh, in your career in UFC history. I mean, that's an all-time highlight. So, what are you what, what are you feeling right now? How'd you feel about the the fight? Um, felt felt okay about it. Um, I couldn't wake up in there really, like the whole time in the back, the walk to the octagon, the first the second round, my body couldn't just wake up. You know, I don't know why. Just, I didn't have it today, like the energy that I needed to have. I wanted to be more explosive like in the first, but I couldn't just pull the trigger. Um, but all I was waiting on just for him to shoot. So I didn't care about anything else. I was just waiting on him to shoot, throw the uppercut or, or knee. So we knew it was coming. Yeah. Have you ever felt that before where you just couldn't get the energy going? Is, is that something new in your career? No, I felt it before. It was whenever I fought Nogano, I felt it that time. And it was another time. It was in Austin when I fought Tabor. Um, yeah, it happens off and on. You know, it, it's nothing, I'm pretty sure it's nothing you can prepare for. So, yeah. So, I, I, as I was watching the first round play out, I mean, were you surprised his game? Like you said, you knew the takedown was going to come at some point, right? But mm -hmm. were you surprised he did stand with you as much as he did? Um, like at the end of the first round, I'm like, he's messing up. He's messing up. That's what I was saying in my head. I said, his coach is saying, he's trying to pump his head up. Good. Yeah, you're doing good. And I'm like, all right, keep playing that game. That's what I was saying to myself. I said, okay. The second round came, and I kind of figured that he was trying to, he was going to come out and do the, stand up a little bit. Then he was going to try to shoot. So I just knew I had to just be patient. Did you know, you know, kind of planning that the uppercut was going to be the shot? We have. That's my coach, um, Joe Murphy, and um, Robert Crew, uh, Hendo, Henzo, Hondo, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we've been drilling um, all month, really twelve weeks, really trying to get prepared for this guy. So I got to ask you about the eye pokes, right? There was one at the end of the first round, and then it looked like maybe there was another one in the second, and you kind of gave a look to Herb, like, what's what's going on here? So, I mean... Yeah. Then he said it was my hand. I'm like, nah, I didn't poke him. He poked me, but it's all good, though. Did it bother you at all? I mean, was your eyesight impaired at all, or did it, were the pokes bad? Um, Actually, my eye, it was bothering me a little bit. I think he was eating Cheetos before the fight, so I got a little Cheetos in my eyes right now. Yeah, don't want to do that, man. It's like, <laughs> uh, all right, you, you hit him with the uppercut. He goes out cold. You jump down with two more punches. Uh, was that something uh, a little bit personal there? Was that sending a message to Curtis? That he, had he upset you? No, it's like I can't just turn the switch off just like that. I know some fighters could do that, but I can't do that. I got to wait until the referee pulls you off him because you never know what happens. Anything can happen. He could turn into Stone um, Undertaker and sit straight up and eat all those shots. So you never know. We got to keep going to the referee, say, hey, chill out. Yeah. And then I got to ask you about two things you said afterwards. First, you, you pointed to Curtis. You said, that's Herdeen's fault. So is that like, are you saying that he got you mad with the eye poke thing or what happened? No, because of his corner, his coaches was talking about that was bullshit. And I was saying, that's not my fault. That's Herb Dean's fault. You know, uh, I'm going to keep fighting until the referee pull you off. And that's with anyone. And the same thing can happen to me, you know. So I'm just keep fighting until the referee say stop. So. And then the other statement you made was, I believe, I'm the black beast, not the black bitch. Uh, you heard that. Huh? <laughs> Look at you. you couldn't wait for that to ask me that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I could. Who was that directed to? I'm directed to everybody that's thinking they're going to come in here and get an easy paycheck, you know. And I want Overeem next. You know, I, like I said earlier, I'm already greased and oiled up for him, so we ready. Yeah. I like it. I was going to ask, so when, when would you like to see that happen? As soon as possible, you know, as soon as he passes concussion protocol, whatever, his suspension, whatever he got, that would be as soon as possible. But I would like a three-round fight, you know, just just because. I don't want five rounds. Yeah. But I would like to give a shout-out to a Grindhouse um, Alyssa, I appreciate her for getting me my conditioning and everything where it need to be. And um, Ricardo, Ricardo, what's his last name? Evangelista. Who? Ricardo Revangelista. Ricardo for helping me with my jiu-jitsu and take down defense and stuff like that. And um, Henzo Gracie. 
Yes, for helping me sharpen up my blue belt and my All American wrestling skills. So yeah, I dig. And Main Street Boxing Gym. So if I don't say that, Hondo would be mad at me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Why well, you keep changing the gym name? Shit. <laughs> All right. You know, there's talk of like you or Curtis could have just gone to wait for a title shot, but you want over him next, who's actually just lost a fight. Is it just that person with you that you don't care he's had a loss? Yeah, I don't care. He got he, he had a couple of losses in a row. It's it'd be cool to just to fight him because he's a so-called legend. So it'd be cool to um, to fight somebody like that. And also, he's been talking trash. You know, he's saying that that his teammate Curtis with cut Hannah is lightweight and stuff like that. And he'd been. We've been trying to fight him for years, and he turned down the fight four times already. Isn't that right, Hondo? It was definitely. Yes, so. Do you think he'll take it now? Um, he might take it. He's been hit in the head a couple of times, so he might, might forget all about what happened tonight. So he can probably take it. Did you say that you're oiled up and ready for him? Yes, the clapping cheeks, yes. No homo. Maybe he won't take it then. <laughs> well, he'd probably take it. He's from Netherlands, so you never know. Them guys out there, they stay high. Congrats. Mm. Mm. You, say, you say you only won three rounds. That means you maybe wouldn't be a main event. Would you really not want a main event for your next fight? No, I don't need no main event. I don't deserve a main event. Why you say that? I don't want to go five rounds. Oh, I hate five rounds, man. Five rounds, really, my body is like, man, I already keep on fucking around. We're going to retire on your ass. But, nah, we can't do five rounds. I hate five rounds. He seemed like he was really focused on trying to hurt your, your front leg. And how were those leg kicks? Did it, it look like there was some swelling? Did that start affecting your, your, your stance or your power or anything? Oh, not at all. No, um... Shit, he was really waking my legs up. Like I said earlier, I couldn't get it going anyway, so he was really helping me out. And, um, no, the legs kick didn't bother me at all. And I'm sure you played the fight out in your head multiple times, but how closely to what played out there is what you envisioned that, that would happen in that fight? Um, the uppercut. The uppercut. We talked about that he's going to try to kill my lead leg because that's what all wrestlers do whenever they're fighting um, a striker, try to take out the power. And so we knew he was going to do that. And we knew he was going to play the game and try to stand up. Um, he just did everything we knew he was going to do. It's nothing that he did that surprised us at all. If you keep knocking guys out, how are you ever going to progress beyond a blue belt? You know, what's, what's the plan to get beyond the blue belt? Um, I would like to do the, um, the Chell Sonnen thing. What is, what is it called? Submission grappling stuff? Submission, submission on the ground. Yes. Yeah. I, w I would like to do that and show everybody my blue belt skills, you know. Yeah. Sounds good. Do you have a message for uh, Houston, the people in Texas, before you go back? Um, I'm understanding the reason why it was so cold in Houston, because my hot balls was in there the whole week. <laughs> yeah, I was freezing. So I'm coming back tomorrow. So... The news did say it's supposed to be 70 degrees tomorrow, so we're looking up. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. Yes. Uh, you mentioned uh, in the post-fight interview about uh, being open to welcoming John Jones to the heavyweight division. It doesn't matter who. I'll fight anyone. It doesn't matter who they are. You know, I wouldn't fight no woman, but any, any, guy, any guy could get it. I don't care who it is. Uh, but you would like to fight John? I would fight anyone. Yeah. Anyone. I will say, when you took your gloves off there, you got the internet sort of talking and worrying that you were going to walk away. Is that just, just something to do while you're waiting for, the, for the, the, your arm to get raised, taking the gloves off? I always take my gloves off. See, that's, that's so casual right there because I always take my gloves off after a fight. I usually throw them in the stand, so I usually just take them off anyways. So what would you do with them tonight? I'll put him in my bag. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll probably give him away to some homeless guy. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Hey, Derek, it was just confirmed that you got the bonus as well. I don't know if there was much doubt in your mind that you were getting the bonus, but uh, what, what do you plan on doing with the extra 50K? It's, I've been fighting for a while. It's nothing I could really do with the money that I get now, so it's just really just save it and, I don't know, do nothing with it, really. Just save it. Somebody? It's not nearly as exciting as I thought it'd be. I know. Right? <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, hey, I got 
somewhere to go after this. So don't just try to think about some stuff to ask me. Y'all had all night to ask me a question. Nah, I, I y'all finished? No, I literally was going to ask you where's the after party. <laughs> No, you can't come to after ball with that shirt on. No. <laughs> no. Can't tell you what after party at. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you.